In this video, we're going to take you through some of the key settings for the central heating side of a Neba heat pump. So we're looking here at a Neba S series. The settings are pretty much the same in the F series. That's the one with the little dial. Um, the menu structure is a little bit different, but you're able to use this, this video for, for both of them. If you're using a different manufacturer, generally the settings are about the same, but this one, um, you might need to use a few different terminologies and so on. So, heating. When you come on the home screen, first thing you've got here is the offset setting. Now, offset, if we're using that all the time, that means we've probably got the wrong heat curve set. So what we'd use offset for, and it can be negative or positive, is if temporarily we want to make an adjustment to the relationship between the heat inside the house and the temperature outside. So this might happen, for example, if it's a really windy day, the heat pump won't necessarily know that there's loads of heat being lost because of the wind. So we might want to put an offset of three or four degrees just to get the heat pump to compensate for the storm that's going outside. Equally, um, if we want it to just be a bit cooler today because there's loads of people in the house and there's an extra heat load inside, we might put an offset down in the minuses to use a bit less energy for that time. But generally, day-to-day -day living, we kind of want to be sitting at zero. That's the offset. Now, what if we're finding that every day the house is a bit too cold? The stuff we can do here. So what we'll do is go menu, indoor climate, and then advanced. And in advanced, we've got the option for highest supply heat, lowest supply heat. Lowest supply heat hardly ever changes. Generally, we want about 20 degrees. That's because if we don't need to heat the water beyond 20 degrees, we might as well just switch the heat pump off. So tend to leave that at 20. Um, and then highest supply heat, this one's important. The highest heat supply for your house should have been determined by your MCS registered installer when you had the system fitted. So if you get out that big heat loss calculation that nobody ever pays any attention to, in there it will say the calculated flow temperature. That should be the highest supply heat that's set in the heat pump. We're running our office at 40, that's because we've got low temperature radiators, uh, work really well for getting this low heat dissipated well into the space and making us feel cosy. If you're in an older house with older radiators, that might need to be 50, 55, 60 in the worst case. If you're in a house that's only got underfloor heating, we really want to be 35, because above that, you're just the floor is going to be too hot to walk on. If your house only has underfloor heating, this is set to 60. What you're doing is you're heating the water up to 60 and cooling it back down to 35 and wasting a load of energy in the meantime. So uh, this highest supply heat, very, very important. Once you've got that nailed, the next thing to look at is the heat curve. Now the heat curve in this screen here is the relationship between the temperature outside and the temperature inside. So the outdoor temperature here along the bottom from 30 to minus 40 and then up the side we've got 20 to 40 as the temperature that's flowing around the radiators. So we can have a look here and see what happens at different temperatures. So here if it goes to 4 degrees outside this heat pump's going to try and keep the water flowing around the radiators at 36 degrees and that should give us the right level of comfort internally. What I recommend here with the heat curves when you get your heat pump or when you're starting to to reconfigure it. Go lower than you think. We very rarely find a house that works lower than like four. Four is like an eco house, proper well insulated, maybe airtight, mechanical ventilation. And then some houses need a curve as high as like 11 or 12, which would be an older property. It's quite drafty using radiators to heat it and so on. I would say start with a low heat curve, go four or five to begin with and put all your radiators in the house on full max. Now, if you feel the house still isn't warm enough, then increase the heat curve, wait a day, and see if it's heated up again. And if you go through this process, what you'll find is that you'll arrive at the lowest possible heat curve that makes your house comfortable, and that's where we're gonna use the least amount of energy to give you the house at the, the temperature you want it to be at. So, can take a couple of weeks to get this set up and actually you probably need to go through a winter if you fit your heat pump in the summer you'll find you need to go through a winter and you might need to adjust this a couple of times during that time but don't just whack this on the highest setting because that's where it costs you a load of money so that's a few tips on setting up your heat pump i hope that saves you a load of money and gets you a nice comfortable house 
If you'd like to know more about heat pumps, check out some of our other videos.